Good morning, everyone. These are the reading, language arts, and phonics lessons for Tuesday, May 5th. These are the items that you'll need for today's lessons. Worksheet page 27.1, workbook page 75, and a pencil. You're going to begin by listening to the story, Someone Bigger, a story about a boy and his dad who go flying a kite. That'll be on the next slide. Make sure that you have all these materials ready to go so that you can begin working after you listen to the story. Enjoy the book. Someone Bigger by Jonathan Emmett, illustrated by Adrian Reynolds. Sam and Dad had made a kite. They'd made it large. They'd made it light. They went out on a windy day to see if they could fly it. Can I hold it first? asked Sam. I'm old enough. I know I am. No, you're too small, his dad replied. This kite needs someone bigger. Then dad let go and launched the kite, unwound the string, and held it tight while Sam stood by and watched and wished that he was someone bigger. But the wind blew hard and the kite flew high and pulled Sam's dad into the sky and Sam went running after. Can I hold it now? asked Sam. I'm old enough. I know I am. No, you're too small, his father cried. This kite needs someone bigger. The kite flew up above the town where people tried to pull it down. A postman with a sack of mail, a bank robber escaped from jail. A policeman riding on a horse, a bridegroom and his bride, of course, but all of them were pulled up too, and Sam went running after. Can I hold it now? asked Sam. I'm old enough. I know I am. No, you're too small, the people cried. This kite needs someone bigger. And then, by some strange stroke of luck, they flew right past a fire truck. And when the firemen saw the kite, they grabbed the string and held on tight. But all of them were pulled up too, and Sam went running after. Can I hold it now? asked Sam. I'm old enough. I know I am. No, you're too small, the firemen cried. This kite needs someone bigger. The kite flew on. It would not fall. It pulled a rhino from its stall. And other creatures from the zoo, a tiger and a kangaroo. Yes, all of them were pulled up too, and Sam went running after. Can I hold it now? asked Sam. I'm old enough. I know I am. No, you're too small. The creatures cried. This kite needs someone bigger. But then Sam caught the kite. At last, he grabbed the string and held it fast. And even though he wound and wound, his feet stayed firmly on the ground. And one by one, they came back down. Everyone from zoo and town. Rhino, tiger, kangaroo, fireman, bride, and bridegroom too. Postman, policeman, robber, horse, and last of all, Sam's dad, of course. I'll hold it now, said Sam, because I'm old enough. I knew I was. I'm not too small, and as you see, this kite needs someone 
just like me. I hope that you enjoyed the story, Someone Bigger. Um, the story, Someone Bigger, was about Sam and his dad that went to fly a kite. And while they were flying a kite, Sam kept asking to fly the kite. And his dad kept telling him, no, it needs to be someone bigger. It can't be you. You're not big enough. Although Sam kept saying he was big enough. The dad said, no, you're not big enough. But the dad thought he was big enough. And uh, he flew away. Not only did he flew away, fly away, but they had uh, the postman and, and the robber and groom and his bride and animals from the zoo and firemen and all those people were floating through the air and Sam kept following them saying, uh, now, now can I hold the kite? Nope, you're still not big enough. All those people. And in the end of the story, who was the one? In the end, who finally got the kite to stop? It was Sam. It was Sam. So after listening to that story, I want to know what you think of Sam's dad. And we're going to use this worksheet, okay? Take a look over here um, at, this, at the video and make sure that you have this worksheet. It says um, projectable 27.1 at the top. Okay, make sure also that where, see where I put this, um, this, whoops, now I'm on yellow. I put this yellow arrow up here. Please write your name up there. Don't forget to do that. Okay, now I highlighted this section right in here because with the big red, pink um, bubble, because that's the section of the page that we're going to be working on right now, okay? And number one, it says, the question for number one says, what do you think, Sam, what do you think of Sam's dad, okay? So what do you think of Sam's dad in this story? Um, maybe you think he was mean, maybe you think he was silly, maybe you think he was funny, um, maybe you think he was greedy because he wouldn't, you know, let, let Sam hold the kite. Um, I'm sure that you may feel a lot of things about Sam. I wish we could talk about him, but I put a couple things, um, over to the right over in this area, right over here. Okay. And I put these over here because I gave you two choices. Okay so that you can write on your paper in this area. See right here, it says, I think, and over here it says, I think. And then down here it says, why? Over on the right side, it says, why? Then down here it says, he. Over here it says, he. And I did the same thing on the bottom. We have one choice in red and one choice in blue. So it's your choice which, um, which answer you feel the best about. Um, in the red, it says, um, about Sam's dad. What do you think about Sam's dad in, about in this story? In the red, it says, I think he is mean. Well, why do you think he's mean? Below that, it says, he did not let Sam fly the kite. Okay. And I put the pictures over there so that you remember that kind of helps you remember that he's mean because of the emoji face. It kind of, he kind of looks like a mean face and his thumbs down because he's, you know, it means nope he didn't he didn't let him fly the kite all right or down on the bottom section in the blue writing it says i think he is nice okay why why would you think he's nice well maybe you think he's nice because he took sam to fly a kite which is why the smiley face and the thumbs up is there because that is a good thing. It's happy. It's nice. So maybe you think that Sam's dad is nice. And why? Well, because he took Sam to fly a kite and that was a good thing to do. That's a fun thing to do. So you're going to pick one of these choices. You are either going to pick the one up here in red. If you think that Sam's dad 
was mean because he did not let him fly the kite. Or you can pick the one down here in blue if you think that Sam's dad was nice because he took, uh, he took Sam to fly a kite. And you'll need to copy the words. You only need to copy the, the blue words or the red words, whichever one you choose, okay? And you'll have to write them on your paper in the lines. I'm trying to get there on those lines in your paper. See, it says, I think, that's why mine's already written in black because that's already in your paper for you. The only thing you need to add is if you're choosing that he's mean, you'll write the red words. If you're choosing that he's nice, then you'll choose the blue words to copy. All right, so you'll need to pause this video and make sure that you have um, time to copy down the words onto your paper, okay? All right, once you're done, we'll move on. Press play, and then we'll move on to the bottom to say what we think about Sam. All right, here we are on the same worksheet, but now if you look, we're focusing on the bottom part of the worksheet, all right? We're looking at number two. And number two says, what do you think of Sam? All right, we've already asked, what do you think about Sam's dad? Now we're gonna answer, what do you think of Sam? All right, I've written that over here. What do you think of Sam? All right, and they give us the beginning of the sentence, I think. So I've already written, I think, over here. And I've written, I think, down here because I'm giving you two choices. I think a couple things about Sam, all right? Now, we can say he's mean, okay? And then underneath that, it says, what makes you think that? Just like over on your paper, it says, what makes you think that? All right, well, Sam kept asking to fly the kite. He kept asking and asking and asking and asking, right? So some people may think that Sam was mean because he kept asking to fly the kite. So maybe that's somebody's answer. Okay. Oh, I forgot. Sam, I wrote right there. See, just like on your paper, Sam down there. Okay. Or, that's our word right there. Or maybe I think he is brave. What makes you think that? Sam held on to the kite when everybody else was on there and he didn't let go. So that makes me think that he's brave. I think he's more brave than he is mean. I don't, maybe he really wasn't mean. He was just excited because he wanted the kite, but I don't know, maybe that was just a choice. That was an idea. So you get to pick which one you want to put in there and you're gonna have to do the same thing. Pause the video and take your choice if you want to say that you think that Sam was mean because he kept asking to fly the kite, then that is the answer, answer that you will write over here on your paper. However, if you think that Sam is brave because he held on to the kite and let everybody get down, then you will write the answers that are written in blue over here on your sheet, okay? Once you're finished, make sure that you pause so that you have time to copy down what's here on your on the screen, okay? I don't have any other way to, to give it to you, but make sure that you, have, um, that you pause and that you have time, and once you're done, you can go on to the next activity or the next lesson, which is just gonna be practice. You're not gonna need any worksheets or any papers or anything for the next one, okay? All right, I'll be back with you in just a minute. All right, boys and girls, for this activity, you're not going to need paper or a pencil or anything like that. All I need you to do is just use your ears, your eyes, and your brains, and just focus and listen and pay attention for just a few minutes. And um, we, I wanna review subject 
which is the noun, and verbs, which is, remember, the action word, and talk about using them in a sentence and making those words agree, right? Agree means to get along, okay? When we're writing sentences, we need to make sure that words agree with each other, that they get along, because if they don't get along, then they're not going to sound right in a sentence, right? Um, so that's what we're doing here. And today, I just want to explain a few things to you and talk to you and, and make you kind of think about it and follow um, and practice, I should say, practice a couple of them. Take a look at the letters or the sentences in red on the left side. The one um, on top says, Sam likes red. The one below it says, Sam and Pam like red. If you notice the verb underlined in red, I'm highlighting it right now, the top one has an S on the end. The bottom one has no S. The reason for that is in the top sentence, the only subject in that sentence is Sam. If we're only talking about one person. And when we're talking about one person in a sentence, then the verb has to have an S at the end, right? When we're talking about more than one person in the second sentence, Sam and Pam, that's two people, then we just use the regular form of the verb, like. We don't add anything to the end of it, okay? Let's take a look at the next one. In blue below it, it says, she jumps in the pool. The word, the verb jumps has an S at the end of it. All right, the sentence below that says, we jump in the pool. The verb jump has no S at the end of it. Now go back to the top sentence. Notice the subject, okay, is she. She, how many people is she? One person. One person, so our noun, has an S at the end of it. All right, our next one is we, more than one person. It could be two, it could be 50 people. So therefore, our verb has no S at the end of it. All right, let's go ahead to the other side and practice just a couple more. Number one, the girl sit or sits with dad. The girl. Well, that's one person, just one. So we would need the verb with the S at the end. Sits. The girl sits with dad. Number two, Graham. Graham is a grandma, short for grandma. Graham hug or hugs the children. Graham hugs the children or Graham hug the children? Well, let's see. Graham is how many people? Just one person. When it's one person, we have to use the verb with the S at the end. So it would be hugs. All right. Next one, number three. The parents sings. The parents sings or the parents sing. All right, well, let's see. Our subject is the parents. Well, the parents is more than one. Look in your picture over here to the right. The parents, that's more than one. There are two parents there. You see, in the parents, they have an S at the end also. So that means more than one. So when you're talking about more than one, then we have to use the regular form of the verb that has no S at the end. Okay. Next, number four, the boy wave goodbye or the boy waves goodbye. Which one should we use, wave or waves? All right, well, let's see. The boy, that's just one person, right? One person, single. That's right, we use the one with the S at the end of it when we only have one subject in our sentence. All right, 
just a little practice for today. We're going to keep on with our next lesson and we'll be doing some more of our subject verb agreements tomorrow um, in a workbook page. On with phonics now. Before we go on to our phonics page, I would like to go ahead and review the letter L and W sounds. All right, we're going to start with the letter L. L sounds like L, L, as in lock, log, lake, ladder, lotus, leg, lion, lamp, litter. All right, now the letter W. And the letter W sounds like w, w. All right, whale, not the animal whale that swims in the ocean, but whale like cry like a baby whale. Waffle, watch, winter, waterfall, wolf, wand, window, well, wardrobe, waves, waiter, wheel. All right, now let's go ahead and go on to our phonics assignment. Okay, so now we're going to take what we know about the letters L and W and use it on this page here, page 75. Please make sure that you start off before you do anything else, start off right up here at the top where the arrow is and write your name up there, okay? No different from like when we're in class, first thing you do when you, when you get your paper is what? That's right, write your name. All right, so first of all, we're gonna write our name up at the top and after that, look at that, number one. All right, we have a lion. Larry the lion, okay, L, L, lion. We're going to trace the letter L right here. All right, then look next to that. We have a lamp, lamp for L. So go ahead and write your letter L after that. Ladder also begins with L, ladder. Write the letter L after ladder. Come down to number two, and we have Willie the Worm. And Willie the Worm begins with W. Go ahead and trace your letter W, then write the letter W there on your own. Nice, from the top all the way down to the bottom line, from the top to the bottom. Your lowercase should go from the middle to the bottom line, okay? And this letter W is for the word window, window. And the last picture up here is a wall. Wall begins with a W. Go ahead and write the letter W after wall. All right, so now we're down here in number three. Now you're either going to write the letter or letters, uppercase and lowercase, letters L or letters W after each picture to tell the beginning sound that you hear for each word, okay? First one, watermelon, watermelon, all right? Is it L or W? All right, we're gonna do the one beside that right over here. And that picture is a lock. 
You use that for your bike or maybe to lock up your locker at school. We don't have, we don't, we're too little for those, but that is a lock. W-R-L for lock. All right, now down here, next one is a leaf. Leaf. And our last picture, you know that one, wagon. Wagon. I know most of you guys know already what all those pictures are. Some of you know how to say them in Spanish and then forget to how to say them in English. So that's why I just want to make sure that I review all of them, all the names of all the pictures, and that you know um, exactly what the words are. So, all right, that's it for today for phonics, um, for reading and for language arts. If you have science or math to finish, then you'll finish those. If not, have a great rest of your day. Bye, guys.